welcome to digitize and secure your documents with FileNet. Um, today we have uh, Robert Gallego and uh, CV who are uh, uh, both are FileNet developers within our electronic documents team and they'll be presenting to you. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to them. And we've got about 25 minutes today. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Carmen. As she said, my name is Robert. This is C. Uh, we're presenting about digitizing and securing your documents. And so, quick overview of our agenda. We're going to talk about FileNet, uh, which is our enterprise content management solution. Uh, we'll talk about the various schools and departments that do use them. And we will talk about, kind of give you a walkthrough of how the application works itself. And then costs that are involved, and then a little QA at the end. So we'll go over kind of the scanning portion of it, uh, and how, the, how you take from paper to transforming it to a digital format, and then it gets imported into our uh, file system. Uh, there's a lot of information to cover in a short little time, so we may not go over kind of the integration and office plug and stuff. We might, but if time permitting, uh, we might cut it short. And then, but we will have a booth. Uh, we do have a booth that if you have more specific questions, you can come and uh, ask us. So, why all here? What is FileNet? So, think of FileNet as you know, you all heard of Dropbox, Google Drive, Box. It's very similar to that, but it's all OIT uh, managed, and it's all on UCI's servers. So it's cloud-based, uh, cloud-based storage of your documents. We create specific repositories for your department or school that only you guys can access. Uh, it is encrypted, so it's fully secure, and there is you log in with your UCI net uh, authentication, so everything everything is secure with, uh, with the web uh, I'm sorry, no, uh, single sign-on, and we have multi-factor uh, for your logins. And KSAMs is what helps us control the security, so we create specific KSAM roles for your group. Uh, we also offer disaster recovery for FileNet. So should anything happen to campus, we do, we can probably get the system back up within three hours. So whatever documents that you do have, we, we, we can bring that back up within three hours if something happens to the campus. Uh, as far as features of uh, FileNet, we can offer a full text search. So if you needed to search something within a document, it's possible that you, depending on the type of the way we scan it in or the way you upload it into the system, uh, we do, we'll be able to search and find that document for you. Uh, we do have annotations, so if you want highlights, hi highlight certain file, certain text on a file, or make you know, drawings, sticky notes, or even redactions to where you put a big block out on any kind of personal information or uh, maybe credit card numbers, if that's what you have you want to block out, you can do that as well. Uh, we do offer document versioning, so think of it as you start with one version and you make edits along the way and you upload and it, you have these new edits and you go, I need to see what I did on the very first uh, iteration. It's possible you can go back to the very first one to see, oh, that's what I had. So we do have document versioning. Uh, we do offer record retention, which kind of gives, I know UCOP has specific uh, guidelines as to how long you can store files. So if five years is your retention period, it's possible that we could uh, set an automatic sweep that removes certain documents past the, the retention for you. Um, and as I said, we do have Microsoft plugins that if you have you know, Outlook and you want to store an email, we could have a direct login that will give you kind of the access to your, uh, your repository folder and then you just uh, would uh, transfer it into there directly. Uh, and then we also have a workflow case manager, which the next presentation will go into more detail uh, that 
our, uh, part of our other team will be uh, explaining more in detail if you wanted to attend that. It's right after this one. <laughs> so as of uh, usage right now, uh, between the campus and medical center, we have about almost 10 terabytes of data. So lots and lots of data. Uh, and between both as well, about 8 to 9 million files and almost 2,000 users that are currently using this at this time. So as the schools and departments that are using it, we have, we're fully using this already. Uh, Medical Center has multiple departments, financial services, uh, finance administration, and all the other departments as well. Uh, the personnel records online system that some of you may or may have not in it, used, we maintain that as well. And that's all stored in FileNet and secured, along with like redactions and all that stuff to uh, block out personal information. Here's campus, so academic personnel, budget office, lots of schools, and a lot more kind of on getting ready to be, come on, on board with us. So here's kind of a good example, I'm gonna give you a brief overview. Academic personnel, they have, they have a lot of scanning to do. So lots of papers. So what they do is they'll have someone that helps prep their documents. Uh, they'll print out a cover sheet. And they'll split these documents with the cover sheet. And then they'll call, uh, they'll have the, our scanning department with, uh, they'll just transfer the whole thing to the scanning department, which they will then in turn just scan everything with uh, our high powered scanners. Uh, we have an example on the, if you go to our booth, we have one of those scanners. I think it's like 200 to 300 pages per minute that we can scan. So we can help get rid of your, any of your backlogs. And then from there, uh, we run through our special software that helps index and kind of puts the properties, like name, birthday, employee number, that all goes attached with the document. So now it's kind of all together in one. And so, Here's an example. This is probably your office, or uh, probably someone's office. It looks like this. And what we can do, this is us. We're the magic that happens. And we translate that into file, basically our file content navigator. So now everything is kind of stored in a familiar folder structure. And you can kind of navigate through and where everything is, is located. But we also offer a search kind of interface. So if you did put that name employee number, some sort of uh, some sort of property that you want to help search by, we create the search interface and it helps you to locate those files much quicker. So the burning question, how do we get started? You know, So as we have the booth, we can help you, but we also have a request form on ServiceNow. So this kind of explains how you can find it. Um, if you want, you can contact us first and we can kind of go over certain things here and there, and uh, then you can make the determination whether you need to fill out this form to get the process started, and we'll help walk through you all, uh, all the, the steps to get it done. And so this is kind of some inform the contact information. Uh, my name is Robert, so that's me. So if you can have, if you have any questions, you, I mean, you can also send that to me. Um, we have Vanessa over here, who is our manager for the EDOC scanning office, so she can help if you have an idea of, let's like, so you have that office with all those files, she can help with determining the cost and <coughs> kind of the timeline of the scanning. So now I'll give it over to C to let's play a little bit more other processes in detail. Hey, okay, my name is C, and this is just um, like Robert already talked about the the AD example for academic personnel. This is just like a showing that like a quick run through of how I would be. So suppose you have a document. What we what I do would be providing you with an Excel sheet that you would just like fill out with it whatever properties or or information that you want to associate to that document. And then you would just uh, generate a cover sheet that you would put on top of each <coughs> document. And then here's an example of what that cover sheet might look like with the properties that you want. And then you would call the mailing service, which does the pickup. So they pick, they pick it up for you. And then uh, Vanessa's team at the passport office, central scanning, 
they will do the scanning and put it into Fallet. Once it goes into Fallet, this is how it looks like again. And this is just an example of the search. And this is an example of like viewing the document after you after you find the document you're looking for. And then once you have the document, you can also still see like the properties associated to that document. So suppose maybe if that's not what you want to do, you want you want to do your own scan. This is this is an example for like the school of humanities. They want to do their own scanning and then put it into Fallet themselves. So we have a software called Web. Actually, no, we don't have a software called Web Drive. There's a third-party software that's called Web Drive, but it's getting deprecated. But for this example, we'll use Web Drive. Web Drive is just essentially like a map network drive that you have on your computer. As you can see on the bottom left. Yeah, the bottom left. So you map it in and then access the files like you would on a on any folder system on your computer. You would scan it into your scanner and then just drag and drop it and upload it into Fallet that way. And then once it goes into a Fallet, you can index it, you can have a search that says, okay, show me all the documents that haven't been processed yet. And then you can process them that way yourself. Edit the properties and then type in the properties and then you can also do the search for afterwards too. Well, actually no, this one is. This one is showing that you can also go into Content Navigator online and also drop the files in that way too. And then type in the properties. So next we'll talk about a little bit about central services scanning and how they can process it, process it for you. So none of us here are, probably majority of us here aren't students or faculty. But the scenario is mainly for faculty if, who like do student exams and how, how we can process that. So we can do a, an OCR reading like text from, that's generated from the computer or ICR, which is handwritten text. And here's an example of an ICR where a student writes their name, bubbles in, in their student ID, and then this gets processed by central services, central scanning, and then it goes into, this one goes into Triple E and it gets redistributed to all the students. <coughs> Here is just an example for the personnel records online, which was previously known as EROS, or personal, uh, employee records online. Here we can show like, um, that we can redact, redact or annotate um, social security numbers before it goes into Fallon. Other methods for using Fallon, as Robert described at first, was you don't have to, you don't have to use a map drive or, or a log on. You can, use an office plugin. So this is just an example of, of showing like, like how it would look like, but here's an example of how it would look like in Outlook. So that's the new toolbar you would get after like installing a, a plugin for Outlook. And here's a closer look at, at that. You get, a, you get an ECM, ECM tab that you can see that you can connect and then upload your files that way. And then you can attach different parts of an attachment to an email from an email or attach the entire email all together with the, with the PDF and everything. So after, after that, here's a little bit about the cost associated with the uh, file. And then, I don't, <coughs> you don't really need to describe it, but then for PII data, like personal, like social security numbers and everything, that, those information, it's free to store into Fallon that way too. And then here, if you have any customizations that you would like, we also provide that too and support that. And the central services scan cost is up there too, and you can contact Vanessa for that. We also support DocuSign, so if if you have documents in DocuSign, we can also transfer those into Fallon with the properties as well. And that's the end of our presentation. Are there any questions? Yes. Um, if you back this information up in the event that the university is yes. hacked, that uh, this information is someplace yes. versus just on whatever that it's, server is? It's, uh, that's, that's what we have disaster recovery for. So all the information that we have on 
on campus is also stored in San Diego. Yeah, everything is backed up pretty much almost real time. So a lot of their, a lot of your hard do documents, uh, I think within five minutes, we'll have it backed up into uh, the San Diego Center. Okay, and question number two is, as technology evolves uh, and new versions of things come on, you can guarantee me that 30 years from now, a document I put in the system today will be there then? Because right now I can't. I've been here on campus for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. I have performance evaluations and things that I, uh, my first one, 36 years ago, I can't read it anymore. It comes up, but it's all like in uh, characters. And so I know that there are new versions of things that have come through. So I never thought I'd be here as long as I am. And, and so I see these new versions uh, hurting my documents. Will that happen in the future? You mean you mean like it doesn't transfer over properly? <clears throat> no, it's not even on floppy. It, no, it's not. It's in my um, save drive or what? So these documents are stored as your original. If you upload a PDF, it will stay a PDF. So there's nothing. Uh, there's no conversion of the file itself. Yeah, if you don't upgrade the software, it doesn't like it doesn't do anything to the file itself, to corrupt it or or degrade it. No, I just. Just been here a long time, and there's a lot of young people who are, you know, five years. Yeah, that data is still there. I can go back five years. I can go back ten years. But when I start going back 36 years, and I'm looking at different documents, and people contact me, do you, you know, be a uh, reference or whatever? I can't read things. I mean, they, they're just corrupt. Well, if you um, so if you're using FileNet, uh, you can use the little custom viewer that we showed it, that uh, can view the PDF or image. But at the same time, you can download that file back onto your uh, computer. And if there's any ever, if there's ever any problems, we can help you kind of determine what what's going on. And what, uh, okay. Where can I get that plugin that you talked about? So we would just contact OIT and just install it on your computer. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Easy. It's an easy. Install. Yeah. We walk through. We'll help. We walk through all the users that need it if they need help. Uh, we have desktops install it, and then we can walk through and log in and uh, show you show you how it works. Okay. As well. okay. How do you handle permissions? Can you can the user themselves give the permissions to each folder or file? Or? No. That's managed through KSAMS. So essentially, like, we, we make it role based. So essentially, like, if we're all in this, if, if we give in certain roles, people in those roles can access certain parts of the file. Right. Like, it can either edit or managers can like, like um, delete folders, create folders, and everything else. At what level are the roles assigned? Like folder level, file level? Oh. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we create several roles for each repository, and based on your needs, we can even create uh, <coughs> kind of multiple roles that can access specific folders. So it just we work with your team or your department to see what your needs are. For most part, most people just need one repository, and then all kind of all files go in there, and then everyone just either has access to edit or someone just has access to just view. Any other questions? Anything for scanning? <laughs> if there's not any other questions, um, feel free. Our booth is uh, number six. Uh, we can provide a little demo if you need, uh, or uh, answer any additional questions. Thank you. Thank you.